Before we begin to look at the details of the tabernacle, this one-of-a-kind dwelling, we'll want to ask, why would anyone want to study a tent, however unique, that was constructed more than 3,000 years ago? Here are some important reasons. Number one, the tabernacle, with all its special provisions, with its priests and sacrifices, reveals the heart and character of God, His righteousness, justice, mercy, and love. When we look at the tabernacle, we're looking into heaven, right into the mind and heart of God. That should be reason enough to think carefully about this subject, but there's more. Number two, the way the tabernacle was to be used shows the pathway to holiness for the believer. Even though the Levitical sacrificial system has been set aside now by the death of Christ, believers today are nonetheless priests and have many sacrifices of a spiritual nature that we are to offer. So from it, we can learn the ways that please God in our service for Him today. Number three, the tabernacle, its form and function, shines the white light of the New Testament accounts of Christ and His sacrifice through the prism of Old Testament types so we can see their distinctive beauties. For example, you may find it difficult to distinguish the various aspects of Christ's sacrifice for us, but we can look carefully at the Old Testament offerings and see these details. They take the abstract ideas and make them 3D, just as a primary school teacher might use physical objects to teach children about abstract math facts. By studying the tabernacle and its use in detail, we have a kind of checklist for our study of the New Testament. For example, we not only find the subject of cleansing by blood with the great bronze altar, we also see cleansing by water with the laver. Do we have both kinds of cleansing today? Well, yes, we do. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin, 1 John 1, 7. But as well, Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word. Ephesians 5, 25 and 26. In conclusion, we might say that the illustrations from the tabernacle, priesthood, and sacrifices are so prevalent and essential to the teaching of the New Testament that without understanding them, we handicap ourselves in seeking to grasp what the Lord is saying to us. The writer to the Hebrews makes the following two statements, quote, Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, Hebrews 9.11. For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect, Hebrews 10 verse 1. As he says, there's no benefit for us to return to practicing the old way of doing things. These practices were like the menu, not the meal. That system provided a series of shadows. We now have the substance. But the shadows cast by God's design give us the general shape and link with the New Testament revelation. If Jesus is the Christ, the high priest of the good things to come, this will provide a series of proofs where he, the substance, will align exactly with the shadow. So let's take our time, think carefully, and enjoy the journey. God's Spirit will be happy to help us. We should find explanations to some questions we may have, but as well, we should have times of rich devotion with the Lord and learn some practical lessons along the way.